sun, our sun, a main sequence star, is composed of hydrogen and helium and is the essential element of the solar system. Space. Mercury. Mercury being mainly composed of iron and heavier elements is closest to the sun due to its gravitational pull. Venus, the second planet away from the sun, and most of its composition is undue, unknown due to its high temperatures. Its atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, argon, sulfur dioxide, and water vapor. Earth, our home, the third planet away from the sun, is composed of oxygen, <laughs> aluminum, silicone, and iron. <gasps> Mars, the fourth planet away from the pure, from the sun, featuring the last planet composed of heavy elements made of iron, nickel, and sulfur. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune collectively make up the group known as the Jovian planets. The general structure of the Jovian planets are opposite those of the terrestrial planets. Rather, rather than having thin atmospheres around relatively large rocky bodies, the Jovian planet have relatively small, dense cores surrounded by massive layers of gas, made almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. These planets do not have solid surfaces. Hydrogen compounds such as water and methane typically condense at low temperatures and remain gaseous inside the front line, frost line, where temperatures are higher. The heavier rocky and metallic materials are better suited to condense at higher temperatures thus the inner planets are made almost entirely of rock and metal and from the group known as terrestrial planets how did the terrestrial planet form after the heavier elements and minerals condensed into solid bits of rock they all orbited the sun at the same speed as you can imagine collisions of objects moving at the same speed are less destructive than those of objects moving at different speeds thus when rocks orbiting the sun move close to one another they stick together more often than they destroy each other these pieces gradually grow larger in a process called accretion. once they are large enough gravity forces them into spherical shapes our stars stellar nursery stellar nursery clouds of dust are clouds of dust and gas all starts to collapse all elements form get hit by a shock wave or force and it all collapses on each other and then a protostar heat just starts forming in on each other from everything collapsing this process takes a hundred thousand to ten million years and then it leads up to a main secret star our sun constantly producing energy from hydrogen and helium red giant star this is a phase where a main sequence star can go after a main sequence star. Red giant starting to cool down. Must, most hydrogen is gone and is now helium. Hydrogen outside is still outside, so those react so it keeps getting bigger. Then a planetary nebula. All reactions are outside. Is just a, outside is just a thin shield of gas eventually disappearing. Then to a white dwarf, just one rock with some heat and energy. Then a black dwarf. The other phase a main sequence star can go to is a is a supergiant, five times greater than our sun. Energy goes by faster. Also, some cloud of nebula. It's also so hot that it get boron, carbon, carbon, oxygen, and magnesium. 800 million degrees makes even more elements. Supernova. A supergiant explodes and it releases energy as much as sun's whole life in one second. Can make more stars. Then it's either a neutron star or a black hole. A neutron star. Supergiant needs to be 8 to 20 times bigger than the sun all the atoms are just squished together black hole 25 times larger than our sun implodes so much it just sucks everything up even light gets sucked in